soy Meli la Biohacker y estoy en Helsinki, Finlandia, en el Biohacker Summit. Y hoy con un invitado especial, su nombre es Sim Land, él es de Estonia y es un experto en longevidad y juventud. Sim, thank you so much for being today with us. And I will ask you, Sim, is it possible to get younger every day? <laughs> well, uh... I mean, like as an organism, you're always like moving closer to aging and uh, you're deteriorating in some shape or form all the time. But the speed of that is very determined by your lifestyle and what you do on a daily basis. So some people, let's say, who follow unhealthy lifestyle habits, they're accelerating much, you know, they're accelerating the aging much faster and uh, they're biologically much older than they are chronologically. So you can be like, you know, let's say your passport says you're 40 years old, but in reality, your body is... 35 or 30 so there is you know a lot of subjectivity about it and uh, you there is many ways to slow down the speed of that which you age you can also you know, to a certain extent rewind it a little bit like you might have been unhealthy until you're let's say 35 years old and you're biologically 45 years old so you're older than you are chronologically but there are ways to kind of reverse it Uh, a little bit, obviously not perfect. You can't, you know, reverse back to your puberty or tw to your 20s, uh, but you can, you know, reverse it. You can play with it a little bit, and uh, there are many things we can w do with natural lifestyle interventions. There, everything we already know, as well as different uh, supplements and uh, other protocols. There, there is ways to let's say, essentially be younger, a bit longer. To be younger, a bit longer. Uh, so, what are these the most important ways in which We can get younger, stronger, more energetic, and improve our our health span. Not only our lifespan, but our health span. Mm. Well, uh, let's say for the health span, um, you just need to follow a lifestyle that includes many things that uh, maintain youthfulness and uh, functionality. So when you look at what happens with aging, you see this decrease in fitness, decrease in muscle mass, decrease in strength, decrease in cognition, decrease in flexibility, um, yeah, a decrease in hormones, you become more insulin resistant or you have a higher chance of developing metabolic diseases. So for the health span, you need to just postpone that, that kind of counteract those things like, you know, exercise, uh, maintaining muscle mass with resistance training, uh, flexibility, sleeping enough to repair your body during sleep. How much is sleeping enough? And is it true what people say about the beauty sleep? <laughs> well, sleep is yeah quite critical for aging. And uh, what they assess is that for adults, it's like six to eight hours is kind of the optimal amount, maybe nine, depending on how much you uh, like exercise and those kind of things. Uh, but yeah, six to eight hours is kind of the minimum. Uh, for let's say beauty sleep, <laughs> then um, I wouldn't say that there is going to be any, anything harmful sleeping nine or hours or ten hours even, uh, but sleeping less than that would be probably bad. Uh, you know, you don't necessarily need to sleep all that nine hours in one go. Like if you have a nap, like a beauty nap, or at uh, noon, then yeah, it still counts. It uh, still helps you to recover and uh, counteract the things that happen during daytime that damage your body and you know cause wrinkles because like if you sleep restrict yourself you're not getting enough sleep then you're causing more inflammation and damage to your body that damages the skin and the collagen etc but it also just you know damages you from the inside like your your brain and your your cardiovascular system and um, muscles etc they become older as a result of that so um, yeah six to eight hours maybe nine i would yeah like if you want to be <laughs> if you're more interested in, in that uh From the aesthetic side and well-being side then yeah like nine hours i think is going to be the good optimal amount oh good and in your talk you you mentioned the circadian ned mm -hmm. how is that important for our youth and our longevity yes uh, well my talk was about essentially maintaining high levels of nad which is a enzyme coenzyme in the body involved with anti-aging and longevity epigenetics and metabolic health and energy production, those things. If you have lower levels of NAD, then you see an increase in the hallmarks of aging and uh, comorbidities. So you develop like 
Alzheimer's or metabolic syndrome faster if you have lower vitamin D. And one of the key ways, or let's say more like sustainable, most longevity way would to maintain high levels of vitamin D would be to have circadian rhythm alignment. So that means being aligned with the day and night cycles of the environment. So morning light exposure, sleep at darkness, get sunlight exposure, and uh, kind of avoid artificial light at night because the artificial light at night it depletes your energy levels. It also depletes melatonin, which is kind of anti-aging. Melatonin has many anti-aging properties, like it uh, detoxifies the brain and uh, apoptosis and autophagy that help with even like skin health. Eliminates all these like junk cells. So melatonin is important for that. And for melatonin, you, uh, to produce melatonin, you need darkness, not uh, this uh, artificial blue light that we have from the smartphones, etc. And uh, yeah, there are ways to biohack that as well. Like you can use blue blocking glasses, you can use red light bulbs to create this more like natural sunset environment. So red light doesn't interfere with melatonin and helps you to maintain circadian alignment and produce NAD, whereas this artificial light does. And uh, yeah, the optimal circadian rhythm for the NAD production would be to, yeah, bright light exposure at the daytime, sunlight exposure throughout the daytime, as well, block blue light at night, sleep at darkness. And um, there are other things as well that increase the NAD, like exercise and time of your eating. Those what are, kind of exercise? Yeah, beneficial, any kind of exercise is still good. And... Uh, you need both, like you need both the cardio and the resistance training because, you know, muscle mass and muscle strength are very linked with slowing down aging and living longer and uh, cardiovascular health is also important. From an NAD side, you need, or the cardiovascular exercise is more prone to increase NAD, but yeah, you need both. You want to do both. Good. And Sim, you wrote one of you, you wrote many books one of the most popular one is metabolic autophagy. Mm -hmm. Why is metabolic autophagy important for our general well-being? Mm -hmm. Well, it kind of links with a little bit with NAD and uh, melatonin. So autophagy is this process of cell clearance and recycling. So you eliminate old dysfunctional cell parts and just junk material. And uh, there are like certain conditions that need to be met to go through autophagy and uh, lack of autophagy just leads to the accumulation of junk material and uh, inflammatory particles which itself is a hallmark of aging as well and uh, to maintain this regular clearance of this junk material then um, you know the circadian rhythm alignment is actually also one of those things that does so so you go through the self uh, recycling at night when you're sleeping and uh, for that you actually need the melatonin as well so yeah you need to go through autophagy when you're sleeping, you need melatonin, and uh, for that you need to block the blue light and sleep in darkness. Um, other things that also actually boost autophagy again, like the, you know, exercise and the time of sleep eating, calorie restriction, those things. So they're very, very like all these things are very interlinked. That the NAD helps to you know, go through autophagy, and the things that boost NAD also help to boost autophagy. And yeah, like I mean, it goes to show that you know all the beneficial things for longevity and anti-aging you already kind of know or the fundamentals that you know exercise and don't eat too much uh, avoid uh, super processed food and uh, sleep well get exposed to uh, daylight and sunlight uh, exercise and dark eating and those things uh, yeah they're kind of the fundamental basics and sim what is the what is the most surprising biohack that you apply or you have seen work in, in people, that you say, oh, wow, this is, this is a little strange, but the impact is very good. Um, well, personally, I've uh, applied and worked, seen people use uh, like fasting or intermittent fasting a lot. So that is a very fast way to see improvements. Uh, and it also helps with uh, all these processes that we talked about. Um, obviously, it's not the most important one. I think exercise is more important than sleep is more important than uh, the fasting uh, or time to eating. But uh, that is a very yeah, powerful way. Uh, obviously, it's not the magic bullet. It's not going to as it compensate for a bad diet or not sleeping or not exercising. But it can be like a 
at least in the short term, it can be a good way to kind of reset the system, or every once in a while, it's a good way to implement some energy stress on the system. Like, you know, it mimics calorie restriction. So you're eating less calories, and that in your body is actually turning on all these longevity processes inside the body and pathways, and uh, recycling the junk with calorie restriction. And uh, this time free eating is a way to just mimic those effects without necessarily even having to restrict the calories. Wow. Uh, Sim, is there anything else that you can recommend people to improve their health? Well, I think uh, I would say, yeah, just you know, kind of follow the light cycles, or you know, the first thing in the morning. I mean, there's like many things that you can do in the morning routine, like meditate or cold showers. You don't need to do those, but you should get exposed to like some natural sunlight or daylight whatever in shape, whatever shape form it comes uh, that is going to be a very critical for just aligning your body with the circadian rhythms that like the Bruce melatonin at night and putting your body on this trail or pathway towards just maintaining these uh, systems good so expose ourselves to natural light before being exposed to any other light especially <laughs> artificial light yeah well that's the best way good sim where can we know more about you Yes, uh, my uh, website is seamlund.com and I'm seamlund on all the uh, social media. Social media. Thank you so much, team. Thank you. Thank you.